sitting here in Silicon Valley, an obvious question I get asked all the time is, what companies are leading the way? What companies should we take seriously in terms of learning new ideas from? Um, well, I'm biased. I'm biased because I spent a good share of my life in startups. I won't bore you with going listing through all the startups out here, but finding ways to legitimately be able to participate and listen in these startups, listen to these startups, is sometimes very important. In fact, one of the ways that you can actually bring the outside in is become part of such a kind of a, a, a hacker space or you know, a Y Combinator I mentioned already, but take a place like Rocket Space, where many, many startups, famous startups have started. Large scale companies are allowed to actually take a desk in such a place and that way listen to what's going on and build new types of partnerships with the startups happening where you can begin to understand what the startups can do, the startups can understand what resources you might be able to bring to the table to radically be able to accelerate uh, market growth in some new type of startup space. Because speed of scaling up is critical, which actually means that the capabilities of a major corporation actually now for the first time can brilliantly complement the radical but adolescent thinking <laughs> uh, in terms of our 20-person startups. Um, so I think um, there's a lot to understand how to play that game, but learn from that. Besides that, the obvious companies where I spend my time is, you know, of course, how is Amazon actually functioning? How does Google down the street functioning? How is Google X functioning? How is Facebook functioning down the street this way? Um, how is Netflix functioning? And how do they kind of do their uh, incubation of radical ideas? In fact, how do they actually heat? How does uh, Facebook, not Facebook, well, actually, how does Facebook um, bust silos inside their own operation so you don't get stuck just learning one kind of thing and looking at the world one way. Uh, Netflix is another place that has some very interesting ideas of how to do that. Uh, I happen to be very interested right now in the HR policies, not the research policies of Netflix to see how they run that operation and so on. So those are the kinds of um, hallmark companies that I kind of get to participate with on the edge to be able to get new ideas and to enjoy in some of the kind of um, free play, so to speak, and batting around ideas um, in, the, in their own kind of unique ways. So that's kind of where I look. Um, but if you want to go the next step, I often get asked, um, what's it like to be connected with these companies? Um, you know, what, what defines a world-class technology company? for somebody who kind of participates in the edge of a bunch of these things. And I have to say, um, I think the answer is pretty clear. The first part of it is immense curiosity. Curiosity reigns supreme in this new complex age we're walking, walking into. Mechanistic thinking is no longer cut it. New things are happening in kind of almost unpredictable ways. And understanding, for example, not cause and effect, but what are the propensities in the context you're working in? How do they play out? But I think the other side of this is the willingness to act. We can think too much, but in fact, thinking and doing co-mingle in powerful ways. Thinking and doing and being willing to be wrong, and then from that wrong, be willing to step back and reflect. And again, here's a case where collaborative learning really helps. Because if you have three or four people looking at the same kind of problem or even failure or mistake, you often get rich insights into what really went wrong in the deep structure level rather than just some superficial understanding of what went on. So I think that's a couple of ways to look at that problem.